Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to members and guests. This is May the 23rd, 2022, and this is a regular meeting of the West Shore Photography Club. I'm Dennis Baker, your president and tonight's host. So welcome aboard. I want to remind you that there is no meeting next week. It's Monday, May the 30th. That's Memorial Day. So enjoy the time with your family and friends. No meeting next week. Uh, the next meeting will be on Monday, June the 6th. We have an image review with our good friend Chip Kane during the reviewing. Uh, there is a theme, and that's why I'm warning you early. Uh, the theme is graceful, graceful. Now, typically, people are reluctant or, or sometimes don't feel comfortable submitting an image when we have a theme. So I'm giving you plenty of time to think about it. Either look through your files or go out you know, and shoot something fresh that, in, at least in your mind, corresponds with the theme graceful. Um, Mary Fox, would you say a few words about your trip to Anvil? Yes, um, about nine people showed up. It was a beautiful sunny day. Um, everybody seemed to have a good time. Everybody showed up sporadically, so we didn't like um, see each other a whole lot, but uh, there was a, there was, it was a nice day. It was a good day, and I think everybody had a good time. Very good, very good, thank you. And uh, Joe will be back soon, and the uh, TRIPS committee is going to be meeting in a week or two, and uh, we'll have uh, many more things planned for the upcoming weeks. Okay, tonight we have a special treat. We have Patrick Cooney with us. Patrick's going to talk about making readable photographs. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Patrick, because we have something in common. He lives in Lancaster, and of course, I don't. Uh, he grew up in New York City and has, an, has had an interest in photography since the early ages. Uh, our thing in common is that we have both studied physics. Uh, we have both taught physics. Uh, I stayed in the classroom until I went into administration. Patrick went on and worked in uh, some high level research in addition to his teaching. And uh, uh, he has had an impressive job resume. Uh, as I say, he's been interested in photography since his early years growing up in New York City. His current projects deal with uh, all sorts of things in fine art, documentary, uh, architectural, and portrait. Now, Patrick wants this to be an interactive session tonight, which is a challenge over Zoom, as you can imagine. Uh, uh, and we want to keep it orderly. So what we're going to do is use chat. And I'm going to moderate. So please respond to his questions in a timely fashion through chat and ask questions that you might have through chat and, and I'll take care of moderating those uh, to Patrick. So with that being said, I'll turn it over to Patrick. It's all yours, partner. Okay, thank you very much, Dennis. I just am putting a little chat message in saying, here's, and I type a typo already. Don't worry about your typos. <laughs> no, don't okay, worry about it. and now I'm gonna hit enter and it says, Here's the chat down below. If you can get, I'm giving you a moment to get used to this. I am going to be asking for responses from the audience. I did this live the first time before COVID. I've done it since on the web. And I really want to get feedback from people. I, I want to engage you and give you practice in doing this task. So I'm going to, from time to time, ask questions. If you type brief answers in the chat, Dennis will feed them back to me. And that's how we're going to do the interactive part. I'm sorry, it's a little klutzy, but it isn't feasible with the now almost 40 people we have on to have everybody suddenly talk simultaneously and dogs bark in the background and whatnot. <laughs> okay, that said, I'm going to close my chat preview again because Dennis is going to watch that. By the way, Dennis, a quick reminder, I would like the transcript of the chat at the end to if you were able to say that in a yep. timely fashion. Okay, now I am going to attempt to share my screen. Let me get down to here and go share screen. And I'll go share. And there's my screen. And people should be seeing a hodgepodge of windows right now. Yes. But I'm going to, one of them says making readable photographs. That looks like a promising one. Oh, that looks good. Oh, there we go, full screen. Okay. and. I believe that you locally control what you see on the right. So if you don't want to see all the string of pictures down here on the right hand side, you can choose the high thumbnail video and see none of us, or you can choose 
seeing just me. I'm just doing these things. I don't know what you're seeing because this is something that I think is controlled locally. Do you see just me now, folks, or do you see more people than me? Yeah, somebody else would have to respond. Just I have you. double monitors. Yeah, somebody, this is a first chance to practice your chat. Okay, and the question was, Patrick, do, do you want to know? Are you, oh, the question is, what are they seeing? Are they seeing just you and me alternately in the top right corner of the screen? Yeah, so we think if you have a little window that's showing um, my pic picture or Patrick's that you might you can move it around. We just I'm, see the screen. I'm going to do that right now myself. I've moved it down to the lower left of my. Oh, I think there's an option in your upper right hand corner. Uh, you move your cursor up there and you'll see view pop up in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Yeah. And then you can change to gallery or speaker or full screen. Yes, those are the little icons that were up there. Yes. But apparently I don't control that. This is a question that Dennis it's in, and I No, it's about. an individual uh, you know, viewer. Yeah. So I personally have lowered mine down to the lower left corner because that's where it will interfere less with everything else. But if you can leave it wherever you want. You can change the relative size of your screen and the pic people's screen, the pictures. But in any case, everybody now should be seeing something that says making readable photographs and my name on the left and a photograph that I made in the Lancaster train station. Anybody not seeing that, please say so in the chat. I think we should be good, Patrick. I think we're okay to go. Okay, making readable photographs. The first question everybody asks is, well, what does it mean to read a photograph? And we'll first do that. I'm gonna show you a sample photograph in just a moment. And we're going to walk through the idea of reading that photograph. Then we'll talk about what readability means and we'll move on from there. So if I do that, it says here's a photo and there's a photo. All the photos, by the way, in this are ones that I have made. They're not other people. So uh, the idea being, first of all, that there's no copyright issues then, even though this is educational. But beyond that, I want to do this for a bunch of reasons. So this is a photograph. You've had a few minute to look at it. What do you see? That's the first question. Uh, you might just put a few words down in the chat. Kevin will read them and uh, he'll tell me about it. Dennis, pardon me, I, I, that was a slip. My first Freudian slip of the night. <laughs> okay, so what do you see? And not everybody needs to reply, but I, I need to get a few feedback things. I What's in this picture that catches your eye first? Okay, some folks are saying a store and people. Yep. A photographer in mirror, aha. Good spotting. Yeah. Mary Aline sees a conversation. Yeah. That is also a very good spotting. So in fact, we're, we're now drifting into the second question. What is happening? Some people are having a conversation. The photographer isn't one of them. Is there anybody else who isn't conversing here? At least in the photograph. <laughs> And of course, we a bunch of people chimed in about other things specifically. They have they see. Oh yeah, there's a lot to see in this photograph, which is why yeah. I chose it. But, okay, so let's just see. Okay, there's a story that we could we could make. We when we look at pictures, we often make up stories about them. And one thing that frustrates photographers is they think they're conveying the story that everybody should see. But that is almost never the case. People see their own story here. So your story is going to be different than mine, even though I'm, I was there, but it is going to be different. So what's the story, the implicit story here? What do you think is going on? No responses to that question yet. Okay, there are there are lots of hints in the picture. Mike is uh, suggesting that the guy in the hat is tired of the other two. <laughs> or he might perhaps not know the woman and the, the other man does. Yeah. But he is he is absenting himself from the conversation. That's the first thing. Question. No. 
were these three people all, did they just all come together at once or were some of them there before and someone or ones arrived later? And what evidence would you provide for that? There is visual evidence in the picture of that. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Janet suggests they're talking about photography. Diane says two coffees waiting for store to open. Good Terry. observation. The Terry. two coffee cups. Yeah. So uh, it was here first. <laughs> the woman or one of the men or both of the men or the one man and one woman. Yeah, Rod thinks the lady arrived later. Yeah, because they're off on their coffee break, aren't they? And they were probably talking before the lady walked up. <laughs> now, I heard somebody say, a photographer. They were talking about photography. What's the evidence for that in the picture? Uh, let's see, Mike and Janet say her camera. Exactly. And she has a backpack on and they don't have cameras or backpacks. So, and uh, let's see what the next question is. I can do it this way. What more is there to see here in the picture? Are there any other interesting objects or what can you conclude about where they are? What kind of a store is it, for example? Or anything else you notice about the picture that seems unusual or at least cause your attention to more information? Yeah. Sherry thinks it might be a thrift store. George says a lawyer's office. And the Rydal and Stauffer certainly sounds like they should be lawyers. But notice in the lower left corner, there's something on the door. Oh, Patty says a bridal registry. Yeah, so it's not likely that it's, it's a budget store or a used stuff store. Not if they're doing bridal registries. Hmm. Hmm. In fact, this was sort of an upscale gift shop. This is, shop is no longer that. What a surprise for a pandemic, but at the time, no one knew that. So this has now become a historical picture too. And often many of our pictures become history in the sense of documentation as we go along. There's one more item that I'm wondering if anybody notices. I'll give you a hint. It's up near the right edge. Okay, is this item uh, significant in terms of photography? It's relevant to the other things that are in the picture. Okay. That's, that's another hint. Still waiting. How, how did I include myself in this picture? You think I cut, in, cut and pasted myself in Photoshop? I didn't, by the way. I don't do stuff like that. I don't do composites. <laughs> And that's me, of course, in the center. Any thoughts? Oh, is there another there. mirror? Here's another hand. Is there another mirror in the picture? Hmm. This is very that, subtle. It's a very small detail. Mike says uh, the metal ball. Yeah, it, it's actually not a metal ball. It's a convex mirror. It's a wide angle mirror. And it's reflecting the buildings that are on my side of the street. I shot this from across the street. Oh, and it's, it's over on the right-hand side of the picture. Extreme right-hand side. That was the first uh, hint. I see. <laughs> okay. But I think, I think you get the idea. We just spent a fair amount of time looking at this picture. And indeed, quote, reading it. That's what I sort of mean by reading, is interrogating the picture and asking these kinds of questions about it. And in a way, that's what I would say, we probably want people who are looking at our photographs to do. We want them to spend some time with them and notice the things. Just like I might mention, we noticed them when we actually looked at the picture because you never see all this stuff when you're taking the picture. Because you can't, you can't look at that many things simultaneously or if you do, the moment has passed a half an hour ago. 
but they are there because we've frozen time in the photograph. So we have time to look at an instant in time. And that's sort of the message for this. But what about photographs? What makes them more readable? In other words, attracts people to look at them and engage with them the way I just suggested we do together. Okay, so the question that I asked myself, this is really the starting point for me of this development of the subject, is when I read something, a newspaper article, a book, even a poster for that matter, an uh, email, anything, we all are overwhelmed by things that we read. How do you choose what you read? Well, that's like saying, how do you choose to spend time with a photograph? But first of all, I found, I thought about this a good bit. If the print is too small, if the print is too blurry, if the print is too, you know, Germanic, I'm not gonna be able to read it comfortably. I might read a sentence or two, but it isn't gonna stick. I'm gonna say, okay, time to turn the page, time to flip the screen. Oh, especially too, we have to know the language that it's communicating in. If I'm reading something, in Swahili, I'm going to be totally lost because all I know are Romance languages and English, which is none of the above. But, and the other thing that stops people from reading, or at least stops me from reading, is typos, uh, poor sentence structures, things that annoy me enough. So I decide I don't want to spend the effort decoding this thing anymore. So I quit. Ah. But first, I have to be induced to look at it at all. So it has to have a good headline, a good lead, a nice title, maybe even a nice title page if it's a book. Maybe the first sentences of the introduction to the book or the preface have to engage me. Or I'll toss it on the pile and go for the next one. But to stay with it, it has to keep rewarding you. It has to reveal more the more you look. And all of these together are a hallmark of what I use when I am reading things and deciding whether I wanna read this email or the next one, frankly. So, but that is exactly what a photograph needs for the same things. So this is the photographs question, okay? Now, how we as photographers make, induce our audience to first look at the picture, then get engaged with the picture, and then think about the picture and spend time with it are the real questions that we care about this evening here. So, and I, there are many, many answers to this. There are probably as many answers as there are YouTube videos about it. What a horrible thought. But uh, one that I, I picked one that I'm gonna stick with for this evening because I admire it greatly and I admire Jay Mizell. Greatly, if you're not familiar with his work, you can certainly just Google him and you'll find his website. He's an amazing photographer, New Yorker. But he has a coda for successful photography. And the first element is unsurprisingly light. We all know that the light in which we take the photograph has a huge effect on the quality of the photograph, the emotional quality of the photograph, as well as just simply its content. So light's very important. Gesture is his next, and sometimes he puts this one first, criterion for what makes a, a really readable, a very good photograph. The readability is my word for it, not his. Gesture, well, we think gesture is, you know, I'm gesturing with my hands, I smile. It's body language, but it's much more than that. It turns out when you think about it more closely, things have gesture too. And we're gonna look at pictures where we'll have an opportunity to see objects that have a gesture that play a role in reading the picture. I and Jay both mean color when we say color. Now, if you're a monochrome photographer, all well and good. That means it's about the tonality of the photograph for you. But I'm of the school of thought, people like uh, Jay Mizell or Joel Meyerowitz, who in fact, once upon a time were black and white photographers because we all were if we've been in the business long enough. Color was very difficult to do. But now it's not so difficult to do and the world is in color. So I, I essentially now shoot everything in color myself. That's a personal choice, that's up to you. But it's still an issue of tonality in the image. Brooks Jensen loves to say it's content, content, content. 
there's thing, the things in the photograph have to be reasonably inherently interesting to people. Now, I'm not much of a spectator sports fan, to put it mildly, but I actually read stories in the New York Times on sports because they're so well written sometimes they just drag me in anyway. So it doesn't have to be something that this person is initially completely interested in and a scholar about or whatever to, to engage them. But content is important. Content matters. We'll look at examples of this in the photographs to come. That's what we're going to do for most of this talk is just look at photographs and think about things like this. Climax, I like to think of as what uh, Cartier-Bresson, Henri Cartier-Bresson called the decisive moment. There's a moment that's the most effective moment to take a picture of many things. Sometimes it's a a relatively long period of time and you can be leisurely about it. Sometimes it's an instant, even in photographing landscapes, the light changes so fast, the clouds change so fast. There is a better time and a worse time to make the same seeming image. And that's what this climax idea is about. And finally, I like to associate this with Elliot Erlwood, who makes very humorous photographs, but they're also really wonderful in many, many ways. And the idea that one way to engage people is to surprise them. Some, not rudely, hopefully, but pleasantly, where they get intrigued, they become engaged because, oh, look at that. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is I have one picture for each of these things that I think that picture exemplifies this idea mostly. And we can look at them now to see what this concrete really means. So here's what I mean by good light. This happens to be something I took in the Conestoga house, which is the mansion that was owned by the local newspaper magnate family. Uh, it is no longer, but, uh, and this was their, what they call the Angerie. You might notice there are some orange trees in it in the uh, pots on the left. And I didn't know that until I, this was, I had this up at a show and sale and two people who were of the family were there and they were saying to one another, oh, look, it's the Angerie. And that's where I learned, this is the Angerie. So you learn things too. But I did this just because I loved the way the light was coming in and how it's echoed in the doorways and the wick and in the windows and the sculpture in the background and all the greenery. It just worked very well for me. So that's light. That's what I mean by a picture that really is built around light. Gesture. This happens to be a human making a gesture, but he's interacting not with another human, he's interacting with an object. This was made at the New York Metropolitan Museum of Art. And yes, you're not supposed to touch the statues, but he did. I was in a workshop with a woman who was a professional photographer, worked there for many years, making photographs of the art for their archives. And when she saw this picture, she gasped audibly. He's touching it. <laughs> but it's a wonderful gesture. And the statues themselves, here's a start in order at the idea. The statues are not alive, but they are sort of humanistic. And they too have gesture, color. This is a picture that is built around very strong colors, in my opinion. This is taken on the street here in Lancaster. And of course, the first thing that grabs you is the huge amount of yellow and then the shadows on it of the fire escape. But notice the blue sky and the green tree and the green roof on the right. And they all work together with the browns of the pole and then the gray as a sort of anchor neutrality in the picture to pull it all together, in my opinion. So this is a picture that I think heavily relies on color for its effectiveness. Here's a content-oriented picture. This is the old main building and on the Franklin and Marshall campus, which I live a block from. And this was taken at dusk after sunset. You can tell that from the sky and from the lighting on the building, it's all artificial lighting. But this clearly is a picture that's about this building and its symmetries. So it's a content heavy image. Climax, a yoga class in a park that's between myself and the campus of FNM. 
And this is a yoga class that I just chanced upon one evening while I was out in the park. And I stood and I just took a series of photographs. But this moment happened. The woman, the figure right in the middle of the photograph, who is relatively small, is the instructor. And all these people are taking the class. And they're all there with their yoga mats. But boy, this was a climactic moment. <laughs> and surprise. I'll pause and let you just look at this one for a minute. If, if, if this were the live audience, people would be chuckling now. <laughs> Perhaps they are anyway. Again, you can see it's the same location in which I took the gesture picture also. But this was a little later on. Any comments along the way for those, uh, Dennis? Or? Not at the moment, no. OK, that's fine. I wasn't asking any questions about it. these were intended as examples of those sites of an idea of five, five, six, six ideas. OK, now this is what we're going to do till the end conclusion marks of the talk. We're going to look at one photograph at a time and ask ourselves the question, what is it that is important in this photograph and makes it work if it works for you? OK. So I'll pause for a moment and ask, if you had to pick one of these things that you think is the most important element in the photo, which one would you pick? I'm, there's not just one, there's never just one. But I, I just type one of the words and I'll let uh, Dennis report to me what comes in on the chat. Okay, things are starting to roll in. Joan says uh, collar and smile. Yeah. Uh, Patty says smile, gesture. smile would be an example of gesture. Gesture, yes, to, Pat, to, to Patty and Rod, it's, uh, well, uh, to Patty it's gesture. Rod says content, Rich agrees with content. Uh, Diane's noticing the journal. Uh, Mike says gesture. Uh, George says gesture, her smile. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I would give gesture a big rank in this. In fact, I'll tell you a story about the making of this picture. This was made at the same time as the light picture at the same place. This lady is a volunteer. It's, it's sort of a museum-like setting, or it was back in the day then. Now they're turning it into some kind of event venue. But uh, in any case, she was checking people in. That's her, the registry where she writes on people's names as they were just entering. And I just was charmed by her appearance and how cheerful she was. And I liked her blue and white outfit and all the paneling and greenery. It seemed nice. So when there wasn't any, when she wasn't busy checking people in, I said, do you mind if I take a photograph? And she said, no, this is a post portrait. And she said, wait a minute here, I'll move the plant. And what did I say to that? Oh, no, no, it looks just fine there. The plant is the, another gesture the way it leans over toward her and the colors go from green to the lighter colors that she's wearing. And it, was the, it wasn't just her, it was her and the plant that what I saw is the photograph. So she didn't move it. <laughs> but that's, that's the story behind that picture. And indeed, it, her, her <laughs> hands too express a very comfortable gesture. She projects comfort in a good way. And then the, the paneling and whatnot is a nice surround for everything. So this is a picture I took on the New York City subway when I was there doing a workshop with Peter Turnley. And we were coming back, all of us, well, in dribs and drabs, from Coney Island. And this is in Manhattan on the subway. So what is this picture's primary effects on the left which one or two would you think are most important and maybe a little bit about why you're choosing those okay terry uh says that the, the girl is daydreaming mm, good observation presumably the one with the bag on her lap uh, Bruce uh, feels that it deals with content primarily, that uh, the girl is telling a story. Yes. Uh, Joan says gesture. Uh, everyone is different. Yes. Uh, every Very good. Picture. Yep. Mike agrees with gesture because of the various facial expressions. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, Rod says content, uh, kids are sharing a thought. Yeah. Uh, Greg, gesture, everyone's eyes, uh, including the advertisement. Oh. Very good. I was waiting for somebody to say that. Okay. Uh, let's point that out to the people. This is a picture that uh, Brooks Jensen reviewed for me among a portfolio that I had sent to him. And he remarked about this, the face and the poster and her face. Yeah. Would you remind I, folks I, who uh, Brooks Jensen is? Sorry? Would you remind folks uh, who Brooks Jensen oh, is? Oh, he's the publisher of Lenswork Magazine and okay. many other things. It has a wonderful, wonderful website. Yeah, he's hopefully they remember because I mention him uh, occasionally, but thanks for- uh, That's fine, uh, thank, you for, thank you for saying that. Uh, Two other things he noticed that are, I didn't know, well, a lot, I, I didn't notice the poster particularly at this moment is matching her expression. What I was watching were the way the two, these two young women were interacting with one another. And then the guy who was with them sort of observing the whole thing, but he's sort of withdrawn from it too. But Brooks pointed out this face right on the upper right corner. Can you guys see my mouse pointer, by the way? Yes, we can. Excellent. And then this face over here, they sort of bracket it. Hmm. This one looking away, this one looking toward and sort of mimicking. It's a profile. And none of this stuff, would, this stuff I would have noticed. In fact, I was sitting across from them and they were there a long time and I was there a long time. And I just had the camera sitting on my knee and I just kept pushing the button. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they got, you know, they were perfectly accepting of the whole idea and they just sat there and had their conversation. So, but this one is another of my favorites. Ah, okay, what's important to this picture? <laughs> this is in Lancaster City. In case you couldn't guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure the chat comments will be rolling in shortly here. Okay, that's fine. I realize that there's a delay with all this. Yeah. There is when you do it live too, because people, two people raise their hands, then other people want to say something and it plays yeah. out in interaction. Yeah. Terry notices the contrast between the old and the modern. Yes, very good. Uh, George, contrast content. Okay. Yes. Uh, I see a surprise. Two worlds collide. Yes, yeah, there's certainly a surprise and climax in this one. Yeah, Diane sees that too, two different cultures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Joan uh, noticed the uh, suitcase in the bike basket. That's, yes, that's a very interesting, people do comment on that. Hmm. Somebody even said they think it's a Sansonite, Sansonite, Sansonite some model of the other. Oh. <laughs> right. Right. It was probably what he had his lunch in. Uh. Terry sees another contrast between the clean and the dirty. Yes. Uh, uh, Rick says, collar and lack thereof. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the color contrast is also indeed mm -hmm. the red, the white, and then the, the, the pastels and the dirty black pant, work pants of the Amish young man. And just as, this is such an important thing to understand about your photographs. The thing in the background is entirely gone now. It's been all torn out and they're building something very new there now. Oh my. It's still a public space, but that is complete history in the background. And I, when of course I took the picture, I didn't know that was gonna happen, but it happens all the time. So you should be aware of this in your photographs too. There's always a documentary element. Yeah. Yeah, Terry uh, feels that the uh, the look of the, the fellow in the red is important to that picture. Yeah, the, his eyes, his gesture. Yep. Uh, and he's probably talking on his cell phone while he's walking too. But his <laughs> gesture, there's a lot of gesture in this picture in the principal characters. The rest are sort of background. But yeah, Diane noted uh, an, another contrast between fitted clothing and bag, baggy clothing. Yes. Not to mention suspenders, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but yeah. yeah okay. Jewelry, jewelry and no jewelry. So here we are again. What do you see in this one? What catches your eye? 
engages you first. Rod says decisive moment. Very much so. So climax in the jargon of this evening. Right. Yeah, Patty noticed the gesture and light. Gesture and light are very important in this image. One thing that I particularly liked was the angle of her arm and the angle of the light. The shadow. And that, of course, completely accidental. And it just happened to be from that court. And this guy who just had gone down before her, they're jumping onto this board and off it, uh, is returning back and running to get up to the top of this ramp again. This was a little festival for uh, mm -hmm. skateboard people that was held at a local industrial plant. Yeah, Terry got the feeling from the picture that the, the fellow in the green wants to join in. And he, yeah, well, he's coming back to do the same thing again. He had just okay. gone before her. Right. And there were people there, skateboarders of all ages, as you might also tell. But yeah, so the color is important, I think, to this. The, the fact that he's in green and all the other colors tend to be warm colors, except, you know, the, the pavement, but still in all. Yeah. George uh, says, uh, climax, decisive moment. Will the uh, skateboarder fall or not? Yes. So a little, little tension there. Uh, Lori says, Jester, the, the young man on the right with the smile. Mm -hmm. uh, Diane says, man in green. Oh, running to take a turn. Yep. Yep. Uh, and, and Rod, Rod says, where are the knee pads? <laughs> oh, how about you? You'll notice these people don't deign to do that. <laughs> they don't fall. <laughs> <laughs> they were very good. Uh, content, Steve says, uh, car, bike, boards, ah, yeah. three modes of transportation. Yeah, that's right. And of course, the frame of the old building, too. Okay. So same question for this one. Same questions, that's what it is. What, what catches your eye? What holds your attention? What's going on? Okay, which of these things are making that work? Of course, each of these pictures almost always has all of the elements in it, but some are more dominant than others and it changes from picture to picture. Okay, and we're rolling in. Joan says color. Lori yeah. says concentration, which would be a form of gesture. Right. Uh, Terry says, which one do we do this year? Oh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> referring to the phone. That, that often I have to lead people into that one. Why are they on the phone and what are they doing? They're making pumpkins for Halloween. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they're costumes, Halloween. some of them already. Yeah. Rod says gesture, family interacting on, on dad's phone. Yep. Mary, Mary Eileen says gesture and content. Patty says surprise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're all eagerly looking. The woman in this picture is uh, our goddaughter. <laughs> One of them. <laughs> but, A couple of people say content. Uh, Rick says what holds their attention. Bruce says what does Google say? Uh, right. Janet, Janet says, looking for a pumpkin design. Exactly. That's the story that goes with this. I, because it's a technical thing, I don't emphasize technique as such. But one thing that helps this picture a lot is not having the windows blown out. Hmm. And this was exposed so as not to blow out the windows. And then the shadows were brought up later to balance it. It's one of the things that, you, that, Digital does so much, especially if you shoot raw, does so much better than film could. Just as a technical. These are the same two boys again in the same house, actually. What makes this work? It's quite a different picture than the other one. Any thoughts on the elements that work in this picture? Yes, yeah, it's rolling in there. Chris and George and Rod all say light is the uh, critical element there. Oh yeah, in fact, this is this involves a, something that's common in stage set design. Not only is there light, but you can see the source of the light. It's the window on the left. 
Hmm. So it makes the light credible instead of having it look artificial. Yeah, Joan pointed out the uh, angle of the legs, which I guess would be a gesture. A gesture, that's right. Both the cross legs and the parallelism or near parallelism to the two forelegs. Also, they did it in such a fashion that there's one left and one right foot in the foreground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the light's beautiful, Mike says. Laurie says, loving the gesture, enjoyment of reading, lighting. Diane says they're both enjoying the book. Jerry says the light is, is important. Janet says light and legs. You bet. I like that. Light and legs. That's good. <laughs> Something different. Alaska. Cruise we went on a bunch of years ago that went up the inner passage. So what, does, what works here? What are the elements that play in this one? Okay, Diane notices that there are many, and Rod, uh, Rick too, many layers in this image. It is layered. It makes use of the idea of uh, visual perspective, uh, Ariel's perspective in this case, with lower contrast as you get onto the layers going further back toward the mountains. Yeah. Rod says horizontal lighting. Uh, Lori says layers of lights. Yeah. Rick said layered lights. Yeah, there's both the illumination of the clouds above, but also the streaming of the light up behind the cloud coming down. Yeah, Mike says the uh, subtle colors relate to coolness. Yeah, it, it, the, the grays, the greens, the, the sky and the water reflecting the sky are the only slight warm tones in it. Hmm. So there's hmm. color to look at. It would be a very different picture if it was in black and white only. Mary Eileen says light and color. Terry says the coldness and gray. Joan says time of day. And Janet says fog and lighting. Time of day is an interesting comment. This is far north and it was in summer. This is very early in the morning. <laughs> and I woke up because I was still jet lagged. And uh, I looked at it and said, oh, look at that. Wow. This is the same scene. And this is a little story about working a scene in different ways. Two very different looking pictures with different ideas, but they're the same mountains and the same foreground. It's just vertical, so it emphasizes more of the sky and more of the water in front. Here, the same elements are really playing, but they play in a different way. There's higher contrast in the clouds and a brighter spot. And there's brighter light in the water, so you see more of the water texture too. Does that shift the emphasis more toward uh, the light? Yeah, this this is emphasis. This uses more of the light than the previous one did. It exploits it more. Okay. If you look carefully, you can actually see still the rays of sunlight behind the cloud coming down, way in the background. And it still has aerial perspective to give you that sense of layering, but it doesn't emphasize the layering as much because it's a smaller part of the area of the total photograph. Oops, sorry, that was going back and forth. Same trip, different picture. What, what works here? It's, it's not easy typing on this these chat sessions. <laughs> no, it, it really I, I is. Not, it I, I, I completely <laughs> sympathize with that problem. Uh, and, and that's why I said people shouldn't worry too much about typos. Right. Uh, it, it, it's one of the prices we pay for Zooming. And yeah, the one presentation I did on visual perception, we had uh, you know, uh, some Mary read a passage that had a lot of typos in it. Right. But she could read it effortlessly anyway, even with the typos, because she That's was looking why you at... should worry about them in this context. Yeah, right. I, by the way, I enjoyed that particular slide set in within your talk. I did. Well, thanks. Thanks for taking the time to watch that. Oh, it was prep for this. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah, Diane sees leading lines in this image. 
indeed there are. Mm -hmm. So that would be, in a sense, gesture. The, the, the curvature of the reflections is also a gesture in my book. Uh, if, the, if the water were mirror perfect, you wouldn't see all that swirl that's here. Yeah, Patty sees color as a dominant element. Very important to all the, the modulation of the greens. Yeah, Chuck agrees, color of water and the light on the wings. Yes, the bird is backlit. Back it's lit. very effective for, for that yeah. purpose. It highlights the bird and the bird's position. Yeah. Climax, I would say, is another important element here because this is a moment. And the bird was flying by, the water was doing its thing, and it just, they all coalesced. And again, it's very hard. You can't just take one picture like this. You need to work the scene and then look and see what you've actually got. And that's another big lesson in all this stuff. All right. so, Rick, Rick says, collar and movement of the bird in the water. Terry yeah. says, the texture of the water in the collar. Yep. All, all. This, by the way, is a photo that I use in a slightly different format on my business card. Hmm. Same trip. Different time of day. <laughs> we were in port and there was the setting sun and the lighthouse and I couldn't resist. Same mountain sort of, <laughs> more aerial perspective. Yeah, Patty says color, light and content. Yeah, yeah, it has all of those things. The detail in my opinion on the lighthouse of antennas and the light I think capture something about modern technology too. And that's part of the content. Oh, Chuck says climax uh, with, well, the well, sun, with the sun well, in that position. Right. The, the sun was actually moving visibly at this magnification. So mm -hmm. that really is the sun. It's not a fake. <laughs> the and haze was enough to cut it down. Enough even sun. get a bit of a halo around the sun there. Yeah, there is from the scattering in the forward direction. What's going on here? I have a title for this picture and I'll tell you the title and see if that opens up any possibilities for you. I titled this Pyre, P-Y-R-E. Uh, George says color, content, action. Uh, Mike says light and gesture. Lots of gesture. Action is an interesting word because, of course, it's a tree. It's still, but it isn't a tree. It's what else it is, as Minor White asked. <laughs> Don't photograph what it is, photograph what else it what is. What else it is. Yeah. Light and color, says Patty. Mike says, yep, color. Chuck says, color, contrast, shape of the branches. Yeah, very much, too. Yeah. Certainly, the color is important. What I, the reason I titled it Pyre is, and again, this is going to be where if people have their picture up in this corner, they're gonna lose something important. I saw this as like a Viking ship. Hmm. And what did they do with Viking ships when the guy was dead or sometimes the gal? They put him in it and they burned it. Hmm. It's a funeral pyre. Wow. It's also a neighborhood tree right down the block, <laughs> but, but yeah, that's yeah, what I like. Yeah. And then that idea, sort of the chaos, this element that almost looks like a figure in it. You saw that as a Viking ship, huh? Yeah, well, because of this detail <laughs> in the upper right, that's why oh, I was- Oh, like the, the, the front of the ship. Yeah. But... yeah, you see that and then you think, oh, there's the prow. Okay. And then there's the keel. And then there's the back right. of the ship. And I put them in the corners to sort of emphasize that idea. Yeah, it looks serpentine to me. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so did the ships. Yeah. They had tails too, as well as heads. Yeah, yeah. Laurie says, shape of the branches take you through the photo. Oh yeah. This is in Buchanan Park, right across the street from our house pretty much. Also at another time. So what works, what's going on with this one? of all these six things and more. 
Any surprises in here, for example? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just noticed. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you have to look at gestures. <laughs> Okay. Part, of the, part, part of the motive of all of this is if you look with ideas in categories like this in mind, you see more than if you don't. Oh. Yeah, Rod says light color and climax. Yeah, it's an interesting climax. It's a very stationary climax, but there is a sense that the dog and the woman, if they haven't seen it already in the lower right, She's facing one way, the dog's facing the other way, but they're right there framed by the, by the two tree trunks. Yeah, I assume everyone sees by this time you've seen the, uh, the woman and her dog. Right. Okay. Most people don't notice that at first because you see the color of the trees and the dramatic swirl of the upper branches. Yeah. George <laughs> suggests that Jay Mizell should add mood to his list. Yeah, this, mood this is what the... Jay means by gesture evokes moods strength uh cunning uh friendliness antiquity mm. gesture is a, a generic cause word for those kind of effects okay so that's why his words are very carefully chosen and they're chosen not to be limiting but to be categorical Okay. Oh, if you want to stick with that a minute, I've got a, a question oh, here. Oh, by all means, please. Yeah. yeah. Mary Eileen says, surprise, you know, the dog and the walker. Uh, right. Mike asks, what are the stones at the foot of the trees? Could they be grave markers? They're not grave markers, but they're the same kind of idea. Those trees are memorial trees that were planted in honor of, a, of somebody who was deceased. Oh. And the plaques are the plaques of who the, the tree is dedicated to. Okay. Another example of good seeing. And that's right. The, the one thing to realize is there's always more to see in a good photograph. <laughs> <laughs> and the more you notice, the more you're getting out of it. So true. And then you start I'm making up your own stories it. about what's going on. Uh huh. And, and your audience stories do not have to be the same as yours. That's, that, that's why I'm sitting here and mostly shutting up at the start. It doesn't matter what my story of the picture is. What matters is what you're getting out of it. You know, Patrick, it, it's interesting in doing this analysis, you're not talking, you're not asking people what's the subject of the photograph. That's correct. That's an interesting approach to take on, on this presentation or, or on looking at a picture in general, because that's something we very commonly ask or, or you know, people ask, well, what's, what's it about? What's the subject? Yeah, that, that's a very good, let me comment on that a bit. I, I found in some image review I participated in that people will look at something and say, what's the subject? And then if you tell them, well, I think it's this facade or something, they'll say, well, then you should crop out everything else because it's the important thing. I'm a great believer in environmental photography. This is actually a good example of that. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a person in this picture. Yes, there was a person in the last picture, but they weren't exactly the subject. What's this picture about? That's the way I prefer to say it, as opposed to subject suggests that there's a thing that is what the picture is about. But it may not be a thing. It may be an emotion, a feeling, an experience. It could itself be the light or the climax or the surprise, as my examples were chosen to show. So what's this thing that we got up here now? Yeah, I think uh, as a result, I'm going to change my approach on, uh, on analyzing some pictures. Yeah. <laughs> hey, a convert! <laughs> okay, uh, Rod says a green corridor revealing a person. Uh, yes. Terry says the quietness. Yes. The, the solemnness of the, the, the yeah. restful and peaceful, Rick says. Very much so. Content, climax, not much surprising here. The light clearly plays a role. What has gesture in this picture? Okay, George, George refers to the power of nature dwarfing the human figure. Yes, the figure, among other things, provides scale. 
But this, by the way, was taken in Lancaster County, in eastern Lancaster County at a county park or a local township park, I believe. Yeah. Chuck alludes to that too, and he says the smallness of the person gives you a feeling of loneliness or being alone. Mm -hmm. uh, content, the trees are gesturing upwards. Exactly. Uh, oh, uh, I like that idea. Yeah. I'm going to say something about that in a moment. Oh. And, uh, that no, one, that's what caught my eye first, was the up upward gesture of the trees. Yeah, that was Joan's comment. And uh, Mary Eileen says, gesture of the trees, graceful and rising. Jerry says, leading toward the light. Uh, there Janet, is. Uh, Janet says, a peaceful path. Yeah. In other presentations, somebody said, and indeed it was what, when I look at the picture, what I think of is I think of a cathedral, okay. Gothic cathedral with the spires and the roof and the person. And it's like we're looking either toward the asp or toward the altar. Hmm. Other people would not see that necessarily. It depends on what your associations are with this type of environment. But that was one of mine when I took the picture. I, I tend, you've noticed perhaps, to have small people in larger settings because they're both scale and they are engaging. If you imagine this picture without the little figure of the woman, it would be a very different photograph. So she's important, but she's not the subject. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the subject idea. Yes, that's a very good point. Now, regarding that last picture, uh, she stands out because she has what a white top on. Yes. That that becomes rather important, right? Because otherwise, you might not even see. That, that was what we call good luck or seizing the moment. Okay. Luck favors the prepared mind. I did not go and issue you her issue her a shirt to put on. <laughs> yeah. Have you, you've heard that the, the uh, I don't know if the myth or the, the story that National Geographic photographers in the old day used to carry a red sweater and a red umbrella with them? Uh, it probably might be true, <laughs> yes. Okay, this is the old train station in Marietta, if I recall. I do a lot, almost all my work locally. Thoughts on what makes this work? What elements come into play? Okay. Yeah, Patty says certainly the light. Light is very important in this picture. Uh, Joan says shapes, angles, I'd be content. Mm -hmm. Rod says light. Mike says color, the contrast of the warm and cool tones. Yeah, and color is important in this picture. I think it would not be anywhere near as strong in monochrome, hmm. especially the cool colors, the blue edge on the roof and the neutralish gray, but with the red borders on the door. Yeah. Yeah, so, Di Diane sees symmetry in the uh, image. Indeed, which is a gesture. Okay, yeah, and that's what Mary Eileen says then. Yeah, gesture right. of the lines right. and the arches of the facade. Exactly. It's not, there's no big surprises here beyond the puzzle of what's causing the bright rectangles. But, and that might have been something that was climactic, but it actually lasted a fairly long time. It wasn't a big rush to photograph. Hmm. Uh, Janet says the light and the shapes remind her of old, something being old. Yeah, exactly, too. It's the antiquarian, the graceful brick circles and arches and decorative work. Oops, sorry. And something a little different. Manhattan in the mid-50s on the east side, in the morning. What goes to make this work? Okay, Terry says the color and the reflections. Very much so. Uh, George says color, light, repeating shapes and patterns. Indeed, and those are all gestures, the repeating patterns and so on. The building's gesture, they ver gesture vertically, they 
the arrays of windows are gestured. Hmm. And there's yeah, plenty yeah. of that, even in the far left, that's a reflection also. Yeah. It's hard sometimes to under, people look at this and they get very puzzled because the blue is obviously the sky. So that orange thing in the top, slightly left of center is actually a tall tower-like building. It would make a good jigsaw puzzle. Sorry? It would make a good jigsaw puzzle. Oh, it certainly would. <laughs> this was shot from a hotel window, holding the camera out with a wrist strap and framing it outside the window. The window only opened a little bit, so I couldn't get you know, more of my, just my arms out with the camera. Wow. But uh, see, uh, more comments rolling in here. Janet says, busy light angle. Uh, Patty says, fabulous graphic color. An important element in this, again, this is a small element, but it's important. The lower left corner anchors it. That's a street, and you can see the cars and people, a little in the crossing, street crossing. Hmm. Uh, and it sort of anchors the thing in reality as opposed to if it was tighter. Yeah, it would be more abstract if that weren't there. Right. Yeah, that's correct. Hmm. That's correct. Okay. And the other thing that if you are into this Miami bit is if you count floors, you can figure out what floor we were on in the building. Room. Because from perspective, you can see that we were someplace, if we look at the center, a little below about maybe two thirds of the way down from the top, you can see a bit of roof and a bit of non-roof. And so I was, it's about a level where in fact all the horizontals are. Hmm. I don't see your reflection in any of those windows. No, that's because it's <laughs> shot looking away, away from my reflection. Right, wrong angle. Okay, yeah. yeah they said other comments were light and color, lights, color, climax, light and color, and patterns. Content would be the sitting co city coming alive in the morning, Jones. Exactly. Says. It is a morning shot, and it is yeah. the city coming alive. Yeah. And uh, Jerry says the leading lines are prominent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the converging parallels all over the place. Converging, that's an oxymoron, converging <laughs> parallels. There we go. Well, if you look at them straight on, they don't converge. Ah, <laughs> uh, but in any case, and here's one where a curve actually serves as the leading line too. I'm watching my time carefully here because I know we have limited time. Oh, we're good. I don't, okay, think, anybody, well, I don't think anybody will, will object. Okay, well, I, I, I'll tell you what, what I want to switch over to. So I want to give people a feeling for the rest of the pictures that there are to look at. And at the end, I'm going to tell you where you can download all of these slides as a single PDF. And you can take your time going through them at your leisure or reviewing them again at your leisure. It's exactly the same slides you're looking at right now on the screen. In fact, that's what I'm using. I'm using the PDF to do the slideshow. Okay. So. This is uh, at the local facility of LGH, the health campus, and it's a cancer treatment building that they built where they have now have an accelerator as well as other therapeutic hardware. And uh, it's very beautiful. Some people photography, I should pause on this one. What's going on here? What engages you? In this photo, or bugs you for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> Any thoughts on this one? Yeah, I'm impressed, Patrick, with the wide variety of genres that you shoot. Uh, it's one of my signature things in a way. I, I was chatting with one of the, the audience members earlier about that fact. Uh, commercial photographers need to have a predictable, many do, need to have a predictable style that they're known for, getting hard to do that kind of work. If you're uh, a devoted amateur, you don't need that. You can shoot anything that appeals to you. And I do a wide variety. What is sameness about, this is also Buchanan Park. <laughs> I do an awful lot of my shooting locally. I have a whole series called In Place. that is about, it's a great advantage to be able to shoot the same thing over and over again in different light, with different subjects in the picture, with different events going on, different feelings. 
and it, it it's something you can't do if you you know if you visit Barcelona for a week, <laughs> you just don't have the time to absorb the real style of the place. Right. Yeah, people, that, even Paris, <laughs> <laughs> people are seeing the interaction between the man and the uh, the uh, young girl, right. uh, gesture of joy. Yeah. Uh, the lady with the bag seems very happy, says Terry. <laughs> yes, yes. There's a lot of gesture in this picture. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, now someone, let's see. Uh, oh, Diane assumes that's grandpa. Okay. It probably is. He certainly looks like he could be, but <laughs> okay. not clear. There was a band playing, and so that was what dancing was about. I was over watching people enjoy the music. And I saw this. Yep. Yeah. Jerry also makes the same assumption that their grandparents enjoying the, the grandkids. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. New York City, the High Line, Linear Park, they built over old railroad tracks in Lower Manhattan. Yeah. Now, now, Patrick, when you're shooting, do you think in terms of these factors, light, gesture, color? I certainly or... do, more so some than others. Well, no, yeah, for me, Jay in his talks and presentations emphasize, in fact, he has a book entitled Light, Gesture, Color. Uh, light, gesture, color are what I think about when I'm shooting. But I also clearly am considering content and I'm waiting for decisive moments like this one where they just were just, you know, they were moving around taking selfies and snapshots together. Uh, and when I see a surprise, it's always nice. But the big three are the top big ones to me, especially gestures, gestures mm -hmm. of things and people and together, yes. So that's yeah. Rod's interpreting the scene there. He says uh, he's not worth it, quote unquote. <laughs> okay. Well, we are. I'm what? Let's see. It's eight eleven, and I do want to leave a little time for wrap up and for further questions. So are you gonna, are you gonna you ask about how do I apply this in, in my real life? I even have a slide pretty much about that. These are some children. And their mom was there too. She had her bicycle also. And they were horsing around. But I just like the gesture again. And the bike and the pathway and so on give a sense of the environment. Oh, this is always a popular picture. We have to pose in this one. <laughs> That's Buchanan Park again. <laughs> uh, I get the impression a lot of stuff happens at Buchanan Park. It used to, pandemic, it's really almost uh, dead now. Yeah. There were, there's bocce courts and I have, I have, oh, on my website, you will find my, I did PDF books uh, a bunch of years, something called the Sofobomo Project. And I have a couple that are done entirely about Buchanan Park. And they're downloadable all for free right on my website also. And I'll be giving you my website at the end. It's also in the original email you got. Mm -hmm. So you can all go there and enjoy all this stuff. I love this picture for the attitudes of everybody. I especially, of course, like the lady with the albino snake. But then how can you resist the dog who's not looking at the lady? He's looking at the snake. <laughs> and the pig, of course, and the man with the pig. But And then the audience. So this was an animal rights and you know vegan kind of festival. That's what the event was to give it a context. It was the uh, can on the pig for donations? Yes, exactly. Okay. <laughs> Again, that's one of the details that helped tell the story. Wow. So. And of course, the body art on, on the woman with the snake. Oh, yeah. 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 She was very photogenic. But yeah. this context with all the reactions and all the facial reactions to everything mm -hmm. was just irresistible. <laughs> Something a little different for the macro people. No, very different. No. Yeah. What's working in what works in this? What does this make? What makes this work? Oh, I see what I like. But we'll what see do you what like? We'll see what let's see what everybody else says. Let's okay, see. fair enough. This is not unexpected. Mary Fox says, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> she's she's not a bug lover. Uh, That's okay. I'm not particularly a bug lover <laughs> either. But when they do something like this, I appreciate. Yeah. Them. Terry says the light. Janet says the lines. Both uh, the light, the backlighting, and the translucence of of the uh, orbs is very important in this in my mind. But I like the lines too. What I yeah. like about them is how straight they are and how they show the weight of the spider. In fact, that, that one of them is the spider spinning. It originates at our body. And that's the current one that's going in. The rest of them are supporting her. Oh, could you use your, your pointer? Your, uh, to, your oh, mouse? I'm sorry, I should do that. Yeah, point, point that out. This that is, line is oh. what she's spinning right away. The rest of them are there and are just supporting her. This one, this one, this one is supported. Look for the angles and you'll know where there's weight or when there's a joint. That's what caught my attention right away. Right. This is the <laughs> physics thing about it, right? I, I guess, yeah. Yeah, the deviation uh -huh. in the line coming from the weight of her, of her body. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And you don't think of spiders as weighing, but there it is. Yep. Patty loves the rim light. Yeah, the lighting was very nice for this. This is right outside my storm door shot through the glass and was doing this across our doorway. <laughs> nice job. You use a out of focus background that's sunlit. Yeah. Do you use a macro lens for that? I did. This was probably an old hundred millimeter macro pentax yeah. I had. David said that reminds him of an alien. Insects yeah. do. They yeah. seem like pretty alien beasts. Yeah. Yeah. Diane noticed the, the weaving and Terry says the making of the web, position okay. of the web being upside down, the spider being upside down. Yeah. So it's right. Joan, Joan. Probably uh, the spider doesn't think of it that way, but. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's working position. Uh, Janet says clarity and detail. Uh, yeah. Chuck says acceptable convergence. Oh. And uh, Nancy sees it as a, a circus high wire act. Yeah, well, all <laughs> these are, in fact, the gesture of the spider. Hmm. I mean, she's not consciously gesturing, but we see the straight lines, we see the angles, we see her body, and we see the lighting. What I'd suggest we do at this point, because it's 816, is I'm going to just go through a little faster. I have a ton of pictures here. I, I built this so it's adjustable in time. Mm -hmm. And I want to get to the end and then leave time for questions. You can carry over the remainder of these pictures to your heart's content. That's Buchanan Park. Climax, perhaps. <laughs> and the reactions. Look at the gestures of the players watching this guy make the basket. Notice, too, that they're in the air. Their feet aren't touching the ground, the two that are at the center. Ah, oh, this is so wonderful. This is Buchanan Park, too. This gets boring after a while, but it doesn't. These young men were playing a game that I've never seen before. It's sort of like volleyball, except they kick a smaller ball with their, or hit it with their heads. It's like soccer. It's a hybrid of soccer and volleyball. And this guy led, was leaping up to kick things. He's in the air. I'll tell you, you find the most amazing stuff when you look. That's the whole key to this. In Lancaster, instead of plastic cows or other art objects, we put around every summer player or upright pianos that are decorated and are playable all around town. And this gentleman is playing at one of them. Again, you can at your leisure Think about the six things and think about what's going on in any one picture. It's a nice exercise. My intent is to give you practice in this. And I've chosen my photographs quite eclectically for the purpose. This is in Italy. Gentleman sitting on an old bench by an old wall. This is in Times Square in New York. Two kids hanging out. And in a review of this photograph, the reviewer commented very much on how so many of my pictures, you can check this out too, involve gestures with hands, people touching things, and in this case also touching themselves, and how it conveys emotion and a feeling of how they're doing. 
This is our crafts fair at our local relatively new baseball stadium, indoors around the back of it. You can see the seats on the far left. Gesture, of course, being what's going on here in the interaction of people looking at something. This is a pure object gesture photograph in my mind, the old torn curtain. This is in a very old house that was being renovated. And I, could, I had access to it before and during the renovation for a, year, a few years, it was a big deal. And this was the, very much before, and I think it's quite evocative of what the house was like, even though there's no, you can't see the house or anything. Yeah, light and color are so prominent there. I, I, I thought that would be your prime motive. Well, they, they, they play an important role because they're warm. Okay. And the, the darkness of the wood and the lightness of the window and the curtain, the, hmm. the tear is what to me okay. says, is the particular gesture. Without wow. the tear, it wouldn't be anywhere near what it is, in my opinion. Interesting. Yeah, how one small element like that becomes so significant in the picture. You might notice that that has happened a lot in a lot of these pictures. Small mm -hmm. elements are very important. Like small people. Like small people, for example, or the snake and the dog. <laughs> this one, I, I hope people can see the bottom of it because there's a very important element in the lower, at the very bottom right edge. This is the Steinman building. The Steinmans are the newspaper magnates, media magnates. They own Channel 8 also, or used to. I don't know if they do anymore. But this is the Steinman building. But it was originally the family did hardware. And it was the oldest hardware store in the nation or something still surviving. But they, mm. with, the, with the window in the front, the back was a restaurant. But I did a whole series of square facade photos like this. It, I have a book of them, one of the PDF books, if you're curious to see more like this. Um, let's keep on. Oops, I have to do something because there we go. Near our train station, another building, but it is the train station. Here the gesture is, the color of course is important and it's about the bricks and the stairway. And here the arrow that happens to point up the stairs. And there a bit of gas meter, all intentional. I want those things in the corners. I want people to explore the image and look around. A facade. It's a pizzeria, actually, at the bottom floor in Lancaster. Oh, I just I just noticed the door in the lower right hand corner. Oh yeah, the person coming out of the door. That's right. That's pretty cool. Yeah, there. I I I. There are how many people are in this picture? <laughs> how many people are in the picture? At least six. I count five myself. Oh, maybe that's a person. Yeah, there may be two people back there. Mm -hmm. One, if that's three, I was counting two. There's the guy sitting here, and then there's the waitress inside or yeah. proprietor putting up a sign. And again, mm -hmm. the lighting is very late afternoon here and is important to featuring the detail of the building. Now, if you just had somebody looking out one of those windows up top, <laughs> yeah, well, I well, there's there's objects in the windows. I don't think the upper floors were occupied at this time, but it would have been interesting. But you can't have everything. Right. Okay. My oh, I know what happened. My keyboard's gone to sleep because I'm going to do it over here. Uh, this is a oh, Trinity Lutheran Church in Lancaster. Again, at dusk, Tiffany window, if I recall correctly. This is Italy, this is Florence. Again, person, but not the subject. The subject is this whole ambience. A little surrealism. <laughs> That's in Marietta, actually. <laughs> Pennsylvania, right here. Here we have objects with a lot of gesture to them. It's an old warehouse building in Lancaster City. 
and there was a phone on this pillar thus how do you know that phone numbers written and people would be standing there smoking their cigarettes and talking on the phone and shoving the butts in a crack in the beam This I call old growth. It's from a lengthy series I have of trees and tree bark and things like that. This is the most abstract picture in this set that you're seeing. You can park again. Again, a contrast with the old trees that are dying or cut down at their appropriate time, but slow long, and the younger trees that replace them. This is in Florence also. This is a surprise, a content, a, a gesture picture. Helping hand is this title. <laughs> and let's see how we're doing on time. It's 24 after. So in conclusion, okay, what you, this is the question that Dennis asked me earlier. What, what of these things do I think about? Well, it goes about something like this. First of all, what am I seeing? Right now, that's what matters, not what I think is coming or what, but what do I see right now and then making predictions about whether I should stick around and watch more. And the photograph you're making, will people be interested in? Does it have, this is a sort of the compositional or the surprise kind of question, something to grab the viewer. Because if they're not grabbed, they'll just move on to the next one. Click, click, click. It's worse on the web than it is in a gallery or museum or a book even. Uh, Patrick, is, it, is there a challenge for you as to how obvious you make that? Uh, I mean, to get their attention? Because many of your photographs are, are subtle that you have to look carefully to, to figure them out. But they do have compositional patterns that are sort of broad. Okay. I would contend. Now let people go back and see if they think that is true. But many of them have a geometrical element that even at a distance, you say, oh, what's that? And you walk up to it. And then you notice things like the little woman and the little dog. Okay. And that's this step. Does it reward extended reading? What are those plaques? Oh, there's a woman in the picture and a dog. And then how do you achieve these and what we're working from today, but these aren't the only ways. This is not the only way to talk about it, but are these six things? That's what I put beside every picture for your, to invite you to work with these ideas and see where they come into play. These are the people who I am very influenced by and have personally taken workshops from. Joel Meyerowitz via video during the COVID, but, and, I recommend all of these people. Costa and Alex and Rebecca, who's his wife, are all are both Magnum photographers. Jay Mizell had a long career in commercial photography, and then he basically quit on that because he had a big dispute about who owns the images. He wanted to retain ownership, and they didn't want him to. And so he went off on his own as a freelance photographer. Peter Turnley is a, a very well-known uh, documentary photographer. He's had a record number, I think, of Newsweek, I believe it was, cover photos in his career. He was just in uh, the Ukraine taking pictures, as was his twin brother, David. They, you know, they both are photographers. And Joel Meyerowitz, somebody I admire immensely too, New York-based street photographer primarily, made the transition to color quite early on too, and he's famous for that. All of these people are worth looking up on the web. And as promised, very simple link to my own, very antique looking. I have, I have not up jazzed it, but all the things I mentioned are there for you to look at in a bit more. It's just my initials, PJC hyphen photo.com. And you'll find this PDF there also. So that brings me to any further questions of any kind about the work you've seen, the ideas we talked about, what the heck does readability really mean? I hope you know that one by now, but if not, ask. Are you okay with, if we just open it up and allow yes. people to unmute themselves? Yes, I, so, could stop, I could stop sharing my screen as long as people don't okay. want to see anything else. Okay, but guys. Yeah, I just open it up to everybody. Yeah. 
you have a question or a comment, just unmute yourself and go ahead. This is Terry. I, I think the way you're looking at photos, the way you showed us to look at the photographs can make a big difference in what we photograph. Exactly by intent. This is intended to be a practice session on doing something. And the something should help you with your photography. Thank so you. thank you. Okay, next. Anyone, that's okay. I, we've left some time for this. <laughs> Not much, but we left some. <laughs> There, there is a photograph on your website of a gentleman um, sitting on a bench, I believe. And one of our members and his wife just passed away in an auto accident. And he looks just like Dimitri. Did it, was it apparent where it was taken? It, I, wasn't, one, it wasn't one you saw in my talk, was it? It was in, no, it was on your website. Okay. And I think he was sitting close to a, a lake or a pond on a bench. Oh, I know. That's on Buchanan Park. Oh, no, that's in, in the city park. Yeah, I know the one you're talking about. Uh, that was taken right near here. So it is Pennsylvania. I, it might have been him. It might not be. I don't know who that subject, who the person in that picture was. I just took the picture because I like the way they were situated and very relaxed and recovering from the busyness of the day. It was taken during a crafts fair, big annual arts and crafts fair that they run in that park. Yeah, Patrick, could you talk briefly about your approach to photographing people? Since you uh, gesture is such an important part of that, I assume you don't engage these people ahead of time? It's sometimes, usually I do not. Usually they are candidates. OK, the uh, counterexample of that would be the portrait that is one of the two that you included in the uh, invitation newsletter, okay. uh, the, the woman who was checking people in. And I, I wanted her because I wanted the expression and the eye contact. But I generally do not do that kind of portrait work. And much more so it's candid photography. Okay like the kids on the train, for example. Yes. I mean, they knew I was sitting there. They knew I had a camera on my knee. They just got bored, didn't care anymore. <laughs> and you're usually- and New York, it's in the subway. Right, and you're usually fairly close with a rather wide angle lens, right? Or normal- That is true, angle. yeah. You're uh, not shooting at a distance with a, a telephoto lens. No, I, I'm one of these people, I, I generally shoot with a 28 or with a, with a, a 20 equivalent or a, a 24 to 70, but at the range between 50 and wider equivalent. Okay. Because that's what I'm comfortable doing. Almost everything you saw was shot that way. Very good. Okay, anyone else have any questions or comments for Patrick? Okay. Guys, uh, as we typically do, would you unmute yourself and, and we'll give uh, Patrick a round of applause and appreciate, you know, show him our appreciation for doing the presentation and for doing it gratis. He's not charging the club anything. So thank you very much, Patrick. A nice thank round you. of applause for thank Patrick. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you. Very thank thoughtful. You. Okay, Patrick, that was wonderful. And it, yeah, as you said, it tied right in with some other things we've done in other presentations. So I appreciate that. And just a wonderful program. And uh, we appreciate it a lot. You bet. Well, I, I appreciate the opportunity to reach out to more people too. So right. thank you very much. Right. Okay, thank you guys and good night. Good night, good night. Good night everybody. Email me if you have any questions. Oh, very good, very good. Dennis uh, has my email address. Yep, 